October must be the best month for SpaceX. They've completed multiple important feats, one of which is launching Starship and catching the booster for the first time in history. This is what they've been in the headlines for almost a week now. And just when we thought things couldn't get any better, SpaceX landed one of their biggest contracts in a long time. We're going to talk about how SpaceX's recent Starship success led directly to this massive new deal, but before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. It all started with the recent Starship flight, a game-changing moment that set off a chain reaction. This was the fifth test flight of Starship, and there was a lot riding on it. After multiple delays and hurdles from regulatory bodies like the FAA, SpaceX was under pressure to pull off something spectacular. And they did just that. The liftoff was smooth, and everything seemed to go according to plan as Starship ascended into the sky, marking a significant milestone for SpaceX. But the real jaw-dropper came later when the booster was successfully caught by Mechazilla, SpaceX's enormous tower designed specifically for this purpose. Now, to understand why this was such a big deal, you need to realize that catching a booster in midair is almost like threading a needle while moving at supersonic speeds. This catch wasn't just a technical achievement. It was a clear demonstration that SpaceX had mastered something no one else had even attempted on this scale. The sight of that booster being grabbed and gently lowered was nothing short of historic, and the world was watching in shock. The shockwaves from that success were felt immediately. Social media was flooded with reactions from space enthusiasts and even competitors. Everyone was amazed by how flawlessly the booster catch went, and it showed that SpaceX was miles ahead in the space game. Now this Starship success was more than just a win for SpaceX's technical team. When a company achieves something this groundbreaking, it naturally draws attention and more business. It's no surprise that right after this launch, SpaceX landed one of the biggest contracts in their history. The U.S. government, through the Space Force, awarded SpaceX $733 million in contracts for national security space missions. These missions aren't just any routine launches. They're critical national security payloads that involve top-secret satellites and other military assets that need to be deployed into space with absolute reliability. The fact that SpaceX was given these contracts right after the Starship launch is no coincidence. These contracts involve two major launches, Task Order 7 and Task Order 8, both of which will use Falcon Heavy, one of SpaceX's most powerful rockets. Task Order 7 will see SpaceX launching the USSF-124 payload from Kennedy Space Center in 2026, and Task Order 8 will involve the USSF-62 mission from Vandenberg in 2026-2027. These missions will deploy crucial national security assets that are expected to enhance satellite communications, surveillance, and missile warning systems for the United States. The details are, of course, classified, but the sheer scale of the contracts shows just how much trust the U.S. government is placing in SpaceX. You might be asking, why Falcon Heavy? Well, the Falcon Heavy is currently SpaceX's workhorse for large payloads, and its performance is unrivaled, at least until Starship becomes fully operational. Falcon Heavy is composed of three reusable cores, generating over 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. That's the equivalent of 18 Boeing 747s at full power. It's capable of lifting up to 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 26.7 metric tons to a geostationary transfer orbit. For missions to Mars, Falcon Heavy can send 16.8 metric tons, making it one of the most powerful rockets currently flying. However, this incredible performance has limits. While Falcon Heavy is ideal for heavy payloads, it is still constrained by size and capacity compared to what Starship promises. Falcon Heavy can handle most of today's missions, including national security payloads, commercial satellites, and deep space probes. But SpaceX sees Falcon Heavy as a bridge to something far more powerful. Starship. Starship, once operational, will dwarf Falcon Heavy in every category. Starship is designed to lift over 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, potentially doubling what Falcon Heavy can do when fully reusable. 
Even in expendable mode, it's still expected to carry around 250 metric tons. This is revolutionary for space travel and exploration, as it will enable missions that were previously impossible, such as sending massive cargo to Mars or building large structures in space. Now, while Falcon Heavy is a crucial player today, Starship is still in its development phase. The recent Starship test flights have shown immense potential, but they're still just that, prototypes. The Starship Super Heavy Combo completed its latest test flight on October 13, 2024. While the flight was a success, catching the booster and achieving other milestones, it's clear that more work needs to be done before Starship becomes fully operational for high-stakes missions, like the ones Falcon Heavy is currently handling. SpaceX has been iterating rapidly on Starship prototypes. From the early SN series, which saw several crashes and explosions during landing tests, to the more recent iterations, the Starship program has seen significant improvements. The current focus is on refining the booster catching process and ensuring that the spacecraft can reliably return to Earth after missions. Looking ahead, SpaceX plans to continue testing Starship throughout 2025. One key milestone expected in 2025 is a demonstration of orbital refueling, a critical step for Starship's longer missions, such as those to Mars or the Moon. Once this process is perfected, Starship will be capable of transporting over 150 metric tons of cargo beyond Earth's orbit, something Falcon Heavy can't achieve without expending stages. In the meantime, Falcon Heavy will remain SpaceX's go-to for national security and other heavy lift missions, as it is a proven and reliable rocket. Falcon Heavy's role will be indispensable until Starship is fully certified and operational, possibly by the end of 2025 or 2026, depending on the pace of development. While SpaceX continues to achieve unprecedented milestones, Boeing's Starliner program remains mired in problems and delays that have left astronauts stranded in space. The most recent embarrassment came in June 2024, when Boeing launched Starliner on a mission to the International Space Station, carrying two astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams. What was supposed to be an eight-day mission turned into a much longer stay due to significant issues with Starliner's thruster system and helium leaks. These technical problems became apparent after Starliner docked with the International Space Station. The spacecraft experienced multiple thruster failures, which posed a serious risk to the safety of the astronauts in the mission. The helium leaks further compounded these issues, leading NASA to delay any plans for the astronauts to return on Starliner. Eventually, NASA decided that Starliner was not safe enough to carry the astronauts back to Earth, forcing the agency to opt for an uncrewed return of the spacecraft. As a result, Wilmore and Williams, who have now been aboard the ISS for months, will remain there until early 2025. They will be brought back to Earth by a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule during the Crew-9 mission, adding to Boeing's growing list of failures. This prolonged stay raises concerns about health risks associated with long-duration space missions, including the effects of microgravity on muscle mass, bone density, and overall astronaut health. Although NASA assured the public that the astronauts are safe, this situation highlights Boeing's inability to execute even basic tasks without jeopardizing the mission. This latest failure comes on the heels of multiple issues Boeing has faced with Starliner over the years. Since its first uncrewed test flight in 2019, the program has been plagued by software errors, parachute failures, and propulsion system problems, leading to several delays. Despite these setbacks, Boeing has continually promised improvements, but the reality has been far less reassuring. The August 2021 test flight was postponed due to stuck valves in Starliner's propulsion system, further damaging Boeing's reputation for quality control. Boeing's corporate mismanagement has only worsened the situation. CEO David Calhoun made headlines when he increased his salary to $35 million, despite Boeing's ongoing troubles, including the Starliner delays and the company's broader issues with the 737 MAX crisis. Many within the aerospace community have criticized Boeing for prioritizing profits over safety, and this sentiment is echoed in the continued failures of the Starliner program.
With NASA now depending almost exclusively on SpaceX's Crew Dragon for crewed missions, Boeing's failures have created a risk for NASA's commercial crew program, which was originally designed to have two viable spacecraft providers. As Starliner continues to falter, questions remain about whether Boeing can fix the critical safety issues and ever meet NASA's standards for human spaceflight. For now, the Crew-9 mission, planned for early 2025, will finally bring the stranded astronauts home. But Boeing's credibility is in tatters. Throughout the delays and technical issues with Boeing's Starliner mission, many people wondered how astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams felt about being stranded on the International Space Station. They were originally set to stay for just eight days, but now face being on the station until 2025. When they finally made a statement, rather than expressing anger over the ongoing delays, their reaction was more understanding. While many expected frustration, it's understandable that they avoided negative comments since they are, after all, working for Boeing and NASA. Wilmore mentioned that being anxious over the situation wouldn't help, while Williams expressed disappointment about missing family events, but remained professional. Their softened reactions highlight their commitment to the mission, even though they are stuck much longer than anticipated. Given that both astronauts are longtime NASA employees and representatives of Boeing's mission, it's unlikely they would openly criticize the company responsible for their extended stay. While the astronauts have maintained a calm demeanor about their extended time on the International Space Station, it's clear that their extended stay will likely have a significant impact on their physical and mental health. Originally scheduled for an eight-day mission, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are now expected to remain in space for at least 240 days, possibly even longer if delays continue. For those who didn't see the Starship launch in person, I've got a surprise. You can still experience it with a realistic Starship model, made just for our loyal viewers. Since you've watched this far, we know you're one of them. Head to the link in the description to grab yours now and relive space history. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.